Good morning. I'm Ross from Coombsmith Property Accountants, and we're doing a slightly different uh, topic today. It's why would you invest in, in property? Why would you buy a rental property? And obviously, key thing to start with, we don't sell townhouses. We don't sell property. I don't have any properties to sell you. I'm just going through some of the reasons why you might invest in property and why it potentially could be better than shares or funds. So obviously, to start with, just a disclaimer, it's general information, not specific information for you. So if you're looking at buying a property, you're looking at yeah, getting a rental, setting up Structures, come and see me, come and get some expert advice. If you're looking for a financial plan for your retirement, come and see one of our um, financial advisors, one of our experts who can give you a financial plan. This is just giving you some ideas around property and the main benefit from you. Also, make sure you watch for the end of what the risks are. And I go through a couple of the key risks with this, so we're not all just talking up property and trying to make it sound great. Um, make sure you watch the slides near the end on the risk as well. So why would we invest in property or any other investment? Um, generally, we're after two things long term. We want a debt-free personal home and we want some passive income. Everyone is different. Don't care about or don't worry about the Joneses down the road. Um, worry about what is right for you, what level of home and what level of passive income. But that is what we ultimately want it. So property in the past, it has gone up very well in the past. So generally, the market sort of goes flat, booms up, gone flat boomed up, gone crazy with COVID, and then we're into some sort of flatter market again. Um, historically, it's gone up about 6.3% a year, which is that green line. You can see it's a nice curve. So based on history, and I don't have a crystal ball, you don't have a crystal ball, um, we would expect property to slowly go up and keep up with that 6.3%. So, got a case study for you um, to run through the little bit of difference with this. So say we've got Ted and Fred. They've got a debt-free personal home worth a million dollars. They can invest $1,000 per month. So that's how much they've got savings or free cash. They've just got their debt, their, their personal home debt-free recently, and they've just saved up 10000 of cash. So they've, they've got a little bit of cash. So if you were going to invest in shares or a fund, generally you would be looking at a um, maybe a 5% return if you're being conservative. Um, some people will go, oh, I invest in this high risk crypto something scheme and it gets me 25%. Well, that might be right, but that's obviously a lot higher risk. A normal person in funds or, um, or shares may be looking for 5%, just trying to be reasonable, not trying to be aggressive. We've been really generous with this calculation and worked on 10%. Um, so what we're looking at is what's this going to be worth in um, 10 years' time and what's going to happen with it. So, uh, yeah, what obviously happened is you're going to start off with the $10,000. You're going to put in 1000 per month. Um, the 10% return, and we're looking over 10 years, your money is slowly going to build up and up and up and up over time. Some of it is going to be your contributions, 120000 Some of it's going to be your starting 10000 And 100000 is going to come from interest or dividends or wealth built up over that time in that fund. So you're going to end up with about 232000 um, after 10 years. Talking to fund advisors, um, that's pretty much what they would expect. They would be happy that that's slowly grown over time. 10% return they would be ecstatic with. Um, they think much more that 5% is more realistic to look for. And I'm just using this as the 10% as an example, definitely not saying you're going to get it. So that is with funds. So um, so basically we're looking at 130,000 contributions over 10 years, $102,000 gain, 232,000 value in 10 years time. So let's compare this with property, and it gives a key concept of property and really explains it. So we've got Ted and Fred again. They've got their debt-free personal home. They've got $1,000 a month they can invest, and they've got 10000 of cash. So if we purchased um, a brand-new Auckland townhouse in like the numbers on this are not amazing. I'm not telling you to rush out and buy this, just doing it as an example of how it would work. And to me, you can do better than this. But you buy a rental for 929000 full 100% debt. You borrow the whole amount. And um, obviously, that's up to banks. They'll have to approve that. But if you've got a debt-free personal home worth a million and some good income, you should be able to borrow the full 929000 
Average cash flow shortage over the next 10 years in my expected based on Reserve Bank um, interest rates is losing about 12000 a year. So let's say $1,000 a month. So your $1,000 a month that they were putting into the fund, they're just going to have to put into this rental just to top it up, just to pay um, the interest and the expenses. And that's on interest only. 10 years time, what is this going to look like? And we're going to work on that 6.3% average growth that we did before. Um, so if we look at the same thing um, for property, um, so we're starting off with 929000 That is our key difference. For the investment, we were starting in 10000 cash. Not many people are going to borrow 900000 against their personal house to invest in shares or funds, and probably the bank won't allow it either. Most people will invest their 10,000 cash and then their surplus funds. With property, most people will buy the $929,000 property with full mortgage, or most property investors would. Zero additional contribution, because um, we've got no spare cash, it's topping it up. 6.3% um, gross yield, 10 years, this property is going to be worth 1.7 million. So we're looking at starting at 929, hopefully going up $782,000 um, over its time. So hopefully worth a lot more. You can hear my language a little bit. Hopefully, I'm hoping um, it's definitely not guaranteed. 10 years time, the debt's still going to be 929, hopefully worth 1.7 million. Um, less the debt, we're hoping for about 800,000 equity. And if you remember the numbers on the shares and funds, they were about 232. So it's three times at least the equity gain, if not four times. And that's the concept of leverage. Investments, shares, funds, we're using $10,000. Property, we're borrowing and using the bank's money to leverage our own, and we're investing 929000 So even though we're working on 6.3%, whereas I was nice to funds and working on 10%, it goes up a lot more in dollar term because we've got a higher starting. We're starting with the 929 So almost four times the equity gain from the, the shares funds example. So what this shows is that property can um, achieve a whole lot better gain in value. So when you're starting off and you don't have too much, you've got your personal house and not much more, Property can make you or help you um, gain equity a whole lot quicker because you're investing a whole lot more. Problems? Are you gambling on capital gain? Yes. Um, you're wanting property to go up on value and you're needing it to go up on in value. Um, ideally, you want a property that's break even for cash flow or making some cash to reduce that gamble, but you're needing it to go up in value. For shares or funds, you're wanting them to go up in value too, but probably the key difference is property is just in New Zealand if you're buying a rental property in New Zealand. Um, property is just one asset class, whereas if you invest in funds, you're going to have some in Australia, some around the world, you're going to have some in healthcare, some in education, some in different things. You're going to diversify and split that risk, whereas, um, and in New Zealand, you might only have 10 or 15% of your fund actually in New Zealand shares because it's such a small market. Whereas buying a rental property in New Zealand, you, you're only in one market property, um, residential property, so it's even smaller. And you're in New Zealand, so very, very small, much higher risk from being in that one little thing. It's that saying, don't put all your eggs in one basket. So that's kind of your risk with it. The expected cash flow loss, especially the next two or three years, is the other big thing. Um, so hopefully that's given you some information. Hopefully it's explained leverage and why it really helps property. Um, if you're looking at getting to property, have a look on our link tree. It's got some um, great information. It's got some great videos, short little videos near the top. You can have a free chat with me and a booking at the top. Here's the actual link. It's got our webinar coming up um, this week. It's got a free chat with me. You can book a property advisory meeting with me. Go on our newsletter. It's got some great videos, some useful blogs, and then some old webinars. Um, the Rental Basics one is a great one. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. Hopefully you've got something out of that. And yeah, hopefully we'll see you along at one of our webinars or be in touch in sometimes. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Bye.